Kininyero, it's me again, Engineer Pops, and welcome back to another series of Hashtag Material Testing Series. In conducting our laboratory experiment for today, we will join no other than by Engineer Aleli Joy Alejo. What's up mga ka-Engineero? Good day ma'am, kamusta ka naman? Good day sir, okay naman po. Ah, so paano ba yan ma'am? Ikaw na muna dito ah, iwanan muna kita, then i-prepare ko lang yung mga equipments na gagamitin natin. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Hi, engineers! Our laboratory experiment for today is the measurement of the liquid viscosity using falling sphere viscometer. The main objective of this experiment, of course, is to measure the viscosity of the certain liquid at atmospheric pressure and at standard temperature. By definition, viscosity is the measure of the frictional properties of the liquid and it occurs between the molecules of that fluid. Viscosity is expressed in two distinct forms. So the first one is the dynamic viscosity or also called as the absolute or shear viscosity. And the second one is the kinematic viscosity. At the end of this video, this two value is what we will obtain from our experiment. Ayun, very well said ma'am. At eto na yung mga equipment na gagamitin natin to perform this experiment. First, we need to have three steel balls of different sizes having the specific gravity of 7.8. The first steel ball that we will use is the small one that has a diameter of 1 over 16 inch or 1.5875 millimeter diameter. Medium that has a diameter of 1 over 8 inches or 2.38 millimeter diameter. The large one that has a diameter of 3 over 32 inches or 3.175 millimeter diameter. Ang lilit pala ng spear boss na gagamitin natin sa experiment na to, no? Kaya kailangan, extra careful tayo sa pag-handle nito para hindi malaglag at mawala. Yes, correct. And the next equipment that we will need is the falling sphere viscometer. Falling sphere viscometer is used to determine the velocity of the different size balls as they fall through the liquids to be tested. So let me show you the different important parts of the viscometer. First one is the funnel, and the second one is the capillary tube. Next is the graduation level that is composed of 0, 25, 100, 175, 200, and 220. In our experiment, we can set any distance that the spear ball will travel. So you can set it into 25 millimeter. 100, 175, or 200 mm graduation. Piliin na lang natin yung 100 mm mark for our experiment today. So why? Simple lang naman. Para mas mabilis or para less time yung ating experiment. And the next that we will need is the stop clock. So it is used to measure the amount of time of the spear ball will travel at a given distance in the viscometer. And lastly, suitable liquids for testing. Wait, Engineer Aleni Joy, what do we mean ba by suitable liquids? Good question. Suitable liquids, um, it means that the liquids that we will use in this experiment must be safe to handle. Say for example, um, glycerin, uh, engine oil, honey, or edible oil such as sunflower oil, or olive oil, or palm oil. Pwede din ba yung dishwashing liquid na nabili ko? Yes, of course. Kasi yung dishwashing liquid is an example of a viscous liquid. Isinadjust din ni Engineer Aleni na glycerin yung gamitin natin ngayon since it has transparent color at para mas visible sa video yung pag-pass through ng spear ball sa liquid. And I think we are now all set. So let us start sa pag-conduct ng ating experiment. Let's go! Let's go! First, we will fill the viscometer with liquid to be tested. 
extend to a level just below the exit from the capillary tube. May another question pala ako sa'yo, Engineer Aleli. Bakit naman natin kailangan punuin yung viscometer if hanggang 100mm mark lang naman tayo magme-measure ng pag-travel ng ball sa fluid? Para mas smooth lang yung pag-travel ng spear ball dun sa ating liquid. And para mas ma-less din yung ating initial velocity. Ah, okay. Okay, let's now proceed to the next step. Next! is to carefully drop the three balls of different diameters one at a time through the funnel at the top of the viscometer. So using the stopwatch, time the fall of each ball with a specific distance from the graduations of each tube. This will be used to determine the mean velocity from each fall. So we will repeat each measurement three times to obtain an average timing for each diameter of ball. The first ball that we will use is the small one that has a diameter of 1 over 16 inches or 1.5875 millimeter diameter. is the medium that has a diameter of 1 over 8 inches or 2.38 millimeter diameter. And the last ball that we will use is the large one that has a diameter of 3 over 32 inches or 3.175 millimeter diameter. Ball. For ball 1, trial 1, 7.94. Trial 2, 7.94. Trial 3, 7.99. And the average time is equal to 7.96. The mean velocity is equal to 100 mm over 7.96 seconds. And that is equal to 12.56 millimeter per second. For ball 2, trial 1, 3.52, trial 2, 3.61, trial 3, 3.61, having an average time of 3.58 seconds. And the mean velocity of that is equal to 100 millimeter over 3.58 seconds. And that was equal to 27.93 millimeter per second. For ball 3, trial 1, 2.15, Trial 2, 2.07. Trial 3, 2.03. And their average time is equal to 2.08. The mean velocity is equal to 100 mm over 2.08 seconds. 
that is equal to 48.08 mm per second. Now, we will convert the mean velocity from millimeter per second to meter per second. For ball 1, 12.56 mm per second is equal to 0 0.01256 meter per second. For ball 2, 27.96 mm per second is equal to 0 0.02793 meter per second. For ball 3, 48.03 mm per second is equal to 0 0.048 0 0.03 meter per second. After that, we will convert the diameter of sphere ball from millimeter to meter. For ball 1, 1.5875 mm is equal to 1.5875 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. For ball 2, 2.38 mm is equal to 2.38 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. And for ball 3, 3.1750 mm is equal to 3.175 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. To obtain the density of glycerin, we will multiply its specific gravity to the density of water at room temperature. The density of water at room temperature from our previous experiment is equal to 995.65 kg per cubic meter. Therefore, we will now compute for the density of glycerin that is equal to 995.65 kg per cubic meter multiplied by 1.26. That is equal to 1,254.519 kg per cubic meters. For the density of steel ball, it is equal to 995.65 kg per cubic meter multiplied by 7.8. So it is equal to 7,766.07 kg per cubic meter. And from our formula, we will need the difference of the density of steel ball and density of fluid. 7,766.07 minus 1,254.519, it is equal to 6,511.551. Kilogram per cubic meter. And now, let's compute for the values of the coefficient of viscosity of the three balls. For ball 1, the coefficient of viscosity is equal to 9.81 meter per second squared multiplied by 1.5875 times 10 to the negative 3 squared all over 18 multiplied by 0 0.01256 meter per second multiplied by 6,511.551 kg per cubic meter. And the answer for that is equal to 0 0.71206 newton per meter squared second or pascal second. For ball 2, the coefficient of viscosity is equal to 9.81 meter per second squared multiplied by 2.38 times 10 raised to negative 3 squared all over 18 multiplied by 0 0.02793 meter per second multiplied by 6,511.551 kilogram per cubic meter. And the answer for that is equal to 0 0.7197 newton per meter squared second or pascal second. And for the last one, the value of the coefficient of viscosity is equal to 9.81 meter per second squared multiplied by 3.175 times 10 raised to negative 3 squared all over 18 multiplied by 0 0.04803 meter per second multiplied by 6,511.551 kilogram per cubic meter. And the answer for that is equal to 0 0.7448 Newton per meter squared second or Pascal second. To obtain the value of our average coefficient of viscosity that was equal to 0 0.71206 plus 0 0.7197 plus 0 0.7448 all over 3. And the value of our coefficient of viscosity is equal to 0 0.7255 Newton per meter squared second or Pascal second. And next is the value of the kinematic viscosity. And to obtain the kinematic viscosity of the fluid, we will use the formula coefficient of viscosity 
over the density of the fluid, specifically glycerin. The average coefficient of viscosity of glycerin over the density of glycerin, so that is equal to 0 0.7255 over 1254.519. That is equal to 0 0.000578 meters squared per second. And that concludes our experiment for today. Thank you, Engineer Aleli Joy, for helping us in the demonstration of the determination of the viscosity of fluids. See you again for another material testing survey. Bye!